It took us a really long time to get out of the house this morning. We went and got breakfast, and then we did a bunch of work, edited some video, and then booked our hotel in Prague, which is where we're heading next. But now we're starting to get ready in earnest for the super long walk that we're taking, the Camino de Santiago. We're starting that in about 10 days or so, so we really gotta be a little bit more ready than we are. We realize that we basically only have the right shoes for this thing and that we don't really have the right anything else for it. We even forgot our hip belts for our pack, which we're carrying about 15 kilos or so each. We're definitely gonna need that. Look at these amazing tiny tents that they have to display what the bigger tents look like. Don't you just want to go in there? Or maybe buy it for your cat or dog or something? These things are awesome. There were a couple things that could have worked there, but nothing we really liked. I don't know. We're going to try another store that's just right next door. This one, this one, like a fanning pack, we could carry it like this. It's padded too. We're starting to get a little bit over creative now. It turns out most places don't sell hip belts for backpacks. They just kind of assume that you kept the one that you got with the backpack, which we did, but it's all the way back in Wisconsin. So now we're trying to figure out if we should buy a belt or some sort of weird pool noodle thing that we can tie together or a fanny bag that goes through it. I don't know. Still nothing. That's like 10 stores in a row and none of them had anything even close. So I think we're giving up on this for now. We're just going to go grab some lunch and I think it's time to start sightseeing. So we're here at Lexo and we were told by our hotel that this was like the locals place to go. And I gotta say, I agree. It's like this quick diner buffet style Hungarian food. I got goulash and I got some meatball thing with a bunch of potatoes on it and everything so far has been absolutely delicious and for all this food we only spent 10 bucks. This has quickly become a favorite of ours as well so we'd, we'd really recommend this spot. My favorite combo of spicy and sweet. Nothing better than that. So this island is called Marga Island, and it was named after one of the daughters of one of the kings of Hungary. It's a really cute getaway. There's a lot of cool things that you can rent, like mopeds and scooters. You can get some coffee, sit by the fountain. Really relaxing, family friendly. So we're here wandering around the Castle Hill district of Budapest. It's quite easy to get to. Walk up to Castle Hill in about 10-15 minutes. There are a little bit of stairs, there's a lot of incline, but in a quick 10 to 15 minutes, you're in this beautiful, beautiful area. Budapest's most famous historical landmarks like the Buda Castle, the Fisherman's Bastion, and famous churches here. It's magical. It, it looks like a fairy tale, honestly. There are a few different ways that you can get up here. You can take the bus, you can take Budapest's funicular, but our favorite way to get up here is by walking. Also, the views up here are spectacular. You can see the parliament, the river, all from up here.
One of the things that Josh had been debating getting was this smart band, wristband, to calculate how many steps we've taken, how many miles we've walked every single day, with the goal of eventually getting all the stats that he wanted, maybe for a spreadsheet after the Camino. Every day after a long day of walking, Josh and I would take guesses. How many miles did we walk today? And then after each of us took a guess, we would check our phones and see who was the closest. But while we've been here in Budapest, Josh got his fitness tracker and everywhere we go, six miles, he'll look down and tell us how many steps we've taken. Takes the fun out of the guessing. <laughs> what? I like data, okay? So we decided to stop at this little cafe on the side of the road here. We're used to stopping every once in a while. And one of the things that I've realized since we've been in Budapest is just how much further our money goes here. It feels like we can actually eat out every single day. And it's been really, really nice. How's your cannoli? I'm good. I'm waiting for you to finish so I can eat. Oh. <laughs> I better wrap this thing up then. Our hotel is about $40 a night and it's pretty good. I'd say better than the hostel that we stayed in in Switzerland and definitely not as nice as the place that we spent points on in Innsbruck. Your typical meal at a restaurant for one person will run you about four to eight dollars US here and then even the fancier restaurants you're probably spending at most 13 to 16 dollars. A beer like this will be about two dollars just about anywhere you go. Cannoli was three dollars. Cannoli. There's just a lot more options for a lot more different budgets here and I think that's made us feel just a little bit more relaxed as we're traveling around. Here we're spending about 60 to 80 dollars a day and we're still eating out once or twice a day. Our first cannoli and apologies it's not in Italy we just I don't know why we never got around to getting a cannoli in Italy. That's really good. A little bit of fruit. As we were talking about before, the chain bridge is unfortunately closed for renovation, which is just such a bummer. It's just such an iconic part of being in Budapest, and you just always look forward to seeing the lights go up on it, and walking across it, and back across it. But what that did make us do is walk a lot more. So we walked all the way across the bridge to the north of the chain bridge, the Margaret Bridge, and back across the Elizabeth Bridge, the one to the south. We've been walking about 10 miles or so in total today, which I'm actually super thankful for because we are trying to get in shape or get ready for this Camino de Santiago that we're gonna do in just two short weeks. That's a 500 mile walk across the north of Spain. To be honest, I don't think that we're really in the right shape to attempt something like that. So we've been forcing ourselves to just walk everywhere every single day and today's no exception. Now we've managed to get close to the 15 to 20 miles that we're going to need to walk every day to make the Camino work, but uh, the thing that we haven't tried yet is actually walking with all the weight on of the backpacks that we're going to need to carry for the whole thing. We should definitely get on that tomorrow because I think if we tried it today, I don't think we'd make it very far. Lisa doesn't believe me, but this fountain right here turns off right when you get to it. It's a really cool effect. I don't think she'll be able to trust it though. Okay, go. Even though we're staying on the Pesh side, we haven't really been spending a lot of time on that side. We've been spending most of our time sightseeing in the Buddha side. That's where all the big castles and the big churches are. But now that we're walking back to the hotel on the Pesh side, I can see the Pesh side is just as beautiful. 
this here is the yellow brick neighborhood. Why they decided to only use yellow bricks for just this street? Who knows? So yeah, we're at a mall food court here. It's the West End Mall right next to the train station. And I'm just amazed at how many different kinds of food they have here and how good all of it looks. So out of all the places we looked at, they had this Indian place. Um, had naan, it smelled really, really good. So we went with that one. I've been craving boba milk tea and haven't found the right place, but this was definitely the right place because First of all, the woman that took our order was super, super nice and gave us a free matcha bubble tea. That wasn't even the one I ordered. She, this was the one I ordered, and then she gave us an extra one because someone didn't want it. She was so nice. It was meant to be. Okay, so before you get all up in arms about us eating in a food court, having some Indian food, hear me out. It was delicious. And the food courts here are not like the food courts back at home. You've got Greek food, you've got Mexican food, you've got Chinese food, Japanese food, Thai food, Hungarian food, Austrian food, Norwegian food. There's so many different kinds of foods. It's pretty good. And if you're like me, the best part of it is that you get to choose little bits of everything. Have little bits of everything. The first time that Josh and I went to Bangkok together, he told me his favorite restaurant was in a mall food court. And I was like, right? Of all the places in Bangkok to eat Thai food, that's your favorite place? And then we went to the MBK and had this amazing rice with fried chicken and sweet chili sauce and I was sold. So before you knock eating at a mall food court when you travel abroad, try it. Thanks so much for following along. If you like what you're seeing, please feel free to give us a like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Until the next food adventure in a food court, good night. How many miles did we walk today? And then, ooh. Not having to blah blah blah. Yep. God, that's terrible. And then I got this. <laughs> and when we ordered it, she said, "Was this? Is this your first palinka?" And then she went. <laughs> and then and then we asked her, "Which one's your favorite?" And she said, "They're all bad." <laughs> so auspicious beginnings. What do you got to tell us? So many things to say. <laughs>